Hello everybody, my name is Jeffrey Wei and welcome back to 30 Days to Learn jQuery. So today we're going to take another leap forward. We're going to take a look at effects, how you can use fades and slides, but we're also going to focus a good bit on structure. And this is something you'll especially want to pay attention to. With jQuery, it's very easy to have hugely indented code that makes your projects very difficult to manage when you have all of these callback functions. So that's something we will also handle in the process of today's demo. Now here's what we're going to build. We have a simple post and we want to have a button at the bottom for the user to contact the website owner. So you can see we have this contact me button and when we click on it a contact form slides down and then there's also an X button where they can slide up. But even better we'll offer ways to configure this. So for example if we go back to the code and I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that we can specify some configuration settings. For example, if I would rather fade this image rather than slide it down, I can use fade toggle. And we can say, I want you to do that over the course of two seconds, which is way too long, but just for the demo. And if I refresh the page and I click on it, you'll see that that fades in over two seconds. So it's always nice to allow the user to configure the settings just a bit. Okay, and as always, we're going to begin our JavaScript from scratch. So I'm going to select all of the code right here, and we're going to get rid of it. And what that's going to leave us with is what you see right here. And this is always important to remember. Don't immediately jump into the JavaScript, because remember, some people will be browsing your website with JavaScript turned off. So do you want to provide a contact form for them? Yeah, of course you do. So make it look good first and then upgrade to using JavaScript effects. So here is our base layout. You can see we have our post and then at the bottom we have a styled form. If we want to take a look at that. It's simply a form and then I just have a little bit of CSS at the top that we'll go over shortly. Nothing too big to worry about here. Now, the first step is to determine whether we can use JavaScript. And the easy thing is, if any JavaScript is read, then the user has JavaScript turned on. So why don't we do this? Why don't we apply a class to the HTML tag right up here? So we'll do that right at the top. Once again, I'm going to use a self-invoking anonymous function just to keep from creating lots of global variables. And next, I'm simply going to grab the HTML element. I'm going to add a class and we'll give it a class of JS. So now we know if I open up the web inspector, if the HTML has a class of JS, then JavaScript is available. If it does not, then it's not available. And now we can use that within hooks in our CSS file. If I scroll to the top of my style sheet, you can see that we're styling the contact form. But then if JavaScript is enabled, we're going to make some slight tweaks. So I'll hide it. Remember, if we come back, it's displayed down there, but now I'm going to use that new JavaScript hook and I'm going to position it at the very top and make the width equal to the width of its container. And for now, I'll make the display equal to block. Come back. And now can you see that it's been placed at the very top of our page and then we hide it because we don't want to see it right now. Good. All right, so we're ready to get started. If JavaScript is disabled, our form will function fine. If it's enabled, we can add a little bit of effect to it. Now the first step is to provide a little bit more structure for our applications. Even though this is very simple, don't get in the habit of just creating all of these indented callback functions. That's really difficult to work with. So we will create a parent object and we will call this contact form. I'm gonna make that equal to an object literal. Now first we need a method that we call that sort of gets the ball rolling. And this is most often called init. If you're familiar with object-oriented programming, that would be the same thing as your constructor method. So we'll say init is a function, and this method, as I noted, gets everything moving. So at the very bottom, we're going to call it contact form dot init. Hopefully that makes sense. This page runs, we create a parent object, and then we call its first method init, which gets everything started. Now, within this method, the first thing I want to do is create a button the user can click on that will toggle the display of that contact form. Well, we know that we can create HTML and throw it into the DOM really easily with jQuery. So we'll create those tags, and then we'll pass an object as a second parameter so that we can give it some text. And this text will be contact me. Now, the next step is I want to insert this button right after, if I scroll up, let's insert it right after the article. So I want the button to show up right here. Well, if you refer to the last lesson, we know that once we have essentially an HTML fragment, we can insert that after the article. So I can do that. Insert 
after article. And if you need to be more specific, you can use an ID on that article, you can use a class, you could even say article first, like so. So let's save that for now and come back, reload the page, and sure enough, you can see that the Contact Me button has been added. But when I click on it, of course, nothing is going to happen. So that's the next step. I want to listen for when that button is clicked, and when it is, I want to display the contact form. Because remember, the only thing that keeps the user from seeing the contact form is the fact that we've set the display to none. That's the only thing. So when that button is clicked, we're simply going to alter that display so that we can see it. And in the process, we'll add a little bit of effect to make it look better. After we create the button and insert it after the article, then I'm going to attach an event handler. And we're going to listen for when that button is clicked. And when it is, we have a couple options here. We could pass an anonymous function like so, and this is what we've done in the past. But again, I want you to be a little careful with this. It's very easy with jQuery code to see these anonymous functions extending where your indentation is all the way up here. So many times you'll find that it's easier and more maintainable to reference a named function or method. So in this case, rather than passing an anonymous function, we will pass this dot show. Now, within the context of an object like this, this is going to refer to that contact form. Now to verify that, let's comment this out and I will console.log this because this is something I think is really important to understand. Otherwise you'll get really confused with what is this in this context and in this. So if I log this within the init method, you'll see that it refers to the object. And right now the contact form object only has an init method. So let's remove that, uncomment this. And when that button is clicked, we're going to refer to the object by using this. And then we're going to call the show method. We'll create that method right now. And for now, we're simply going to write showing to demonstrate that it is working. I'll click on the button. And now we do get showing at the bottom. Now, a question that comes up a lot is, well, if show is a method, then why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we calling that method? And it's because we don't want to call it right away. If JavaScript came across that, it would parse all of this code, and then it would come to this section right here, this.show, and it would immediately execute this function. But we don't want to do that. We only want that function to be called on the condition that the corresponding button is clicked. So now we're going to hard code some things in, just for the time being. I need a way to reference the contact form. And the contact form is stored within a div with an ID of contact. So let's create a variable called container, and we'll simply jump into the DOM and grab that div with an ID of contact, like so. Good. Now in this case, we're going to grab the container. We know it's hidden by default, so let's just show it for now. Close this out, reload, and when I click on contact me, we're getting an error. Let's see what it is. Cannot call method show of undefined. Now you can see, and I did this on purpose, you can see that this does not refer to what you think it does. You would think this refers to the contact form object, but that's not what it does. Because remember, we listen for a click event and then we called a function. So it's the same thing as if we did this. And we know from previous lessons that within a callback function, this is going to refer to the button that was clicked. It's no longer referring to that object. So that's why, as I noted, within a callback function or in some other situations, you'll want to refer to it as contact form by its name. Okay, so let's back up just a few steps and then update it to contact form dot container. And now let's see if it works. I'll bring this down, click on the button, and now you can see the contact form. Good, that was pretty easy but now we need a way to get rid of the contact form. So we probably need some kind of close button in the top right corner. All right, let's add that right now. We'll create a new function and we'll call this close. And within here, we're going to create a span. I'm gonna give it a class of close. We'll just hard code this in right here. And I'm going to use an X to represent a close button. Good, so now we've created the span. We're going to append it to, and what will this refer to in this case? And the truth is this can refer to whatever you say it does, but you have to be explicit about that. So when we call this function, I wanna make sure that this is going to refer to the container or the div with an ID of contact. So keep that in the back of your mind. This is the contact div. So we're going to append that X span, or why don't we change it to prepend to, and then once again, we're going to attach an event listener, and we're going to listen for when it's clicked. 
And when it is, we'll just pass an anonymous function here and we will simply grab that contact div and hide it. It's showing the user clicks on the X button, so they're done. Now we need to hide it. But once again, you would think we could do this.hide, but we can't do it because we're within a callback function. In this case, this refers to the div with an ID of contact. But then we listen for when this close span is clicked. And when it is within here, this is going to refer to the span. So how do we roll back and refer once again to the contact div? Well, we know that up here, this refers to the contact div. So why don't we cache that location? So we'll say var this equals this. And now we know that's the contact div. Then within here, we can simply reference it like so, this hide. We showed it, now we're going to hide it. The next step is we need to call this function. So right here within the show method, we know that the user has clicked on the button. They want to see it. So let's make sure that we add the X button and then we display the form. At the top, we'll say contact form dot close. But remember, if we do it like this, this is going to refer to the contact form object. Within here, this will not refer to contact. It's going to refer to the contact form object. Now, there's lots of ways to deal with this, but for demonstration purposes, how could we say, no, within this function, this is going to refer to the contact div wrapped within jQuery? 